All right, Lynn, talk about it. the rematches here. I know you wanted it. I guess give me the excitement a couple days out. I know, man. It's something I've been wanting for a while, so I'm glad that I've actually got what I wished for. Yeah. You know. Talk to me about the difference four years later, right? I mean, it, obviously growing into the heavyweight frame, being used to what it feels like. I mean, I don't know, is it just that, like the physical side of it, or is there, or is there something more to point to as what's different from the first time around? Um, definitely, um, one, the weight, weight difference. Um, it was, I was struggling to make light heavyweight. Um, and then, not say I took him lightly, but it came to the point where I had to change, make a change. So I thought, let me go to heavyweight. And being a bit naive, I just thought, I don't have to do as much cardio, you know, because the heavyweights aren't, you know, that fit. And obviously I paid the price. Um, so what I did after that fight, I went back, spoke to my coaches. I lost about seven pounds and then I came back at 240. Um, worked on my cardio, worked on some holes in my game. And then, you know, my last four, you can see, obviously it helped and it, and it changed changed my game and changed my record and made me go on a four fight win streak. Absolutely. And I want to focus on the successes, but I also do want to ask you like during that time, three losses, you move a division, you lose again. I mean, how tough was that? I mean, you've been around this game for a long time, but do you start having these questions like, do I need to keep doing this? Or like, yes. what was that period like? Like you said, man, it was rough. I don't like to lose and I never lost um, two in a row, let alone three. So I was contemplating whether to retire, spoke to my coaches. They said, nah, it's not time to retire yet. You still got some time in you. Um, so yeah, ended up going back, changed a few things. And then I got the fight with Sergei Karatonov. And um, that was, a, I had nothing to lose for that fight. So I went in there with everything I had, got the win. And then that changed everything around. You know, I think if I did lose that fight, then yeah, I wouldn't be here right now. I think I'd be like, yeah, let's, let's do something different. Yeah. So talk to me then, I guess, because when you put that all in perspective, right, four straight, now we're talking about number one versus number two. Now we're talking about the guy that was the guy that handed you the loss. I mean, is this just like the most like movie-like scenario, perfect scenario you could have ever imagined? It, it really is. It really is. Because um, I was speaking about this earlier. Um, so yeah, Bader and Mordowski both ahead of me, and they both gave me my defeats. So it's, I think it's supposed to happen, you know, like fairy tale kind of business. But yeah, it's supposed to happen. Um, supposed to taste the adversity, I think, and, you know, be, it, be at the bottom and then see what you can do. So yeah, I feel like it's just supposed to happen. My time is, is right now. I love it. And that would be amazing to get those two wins. And the last thing for me, I guess, so, you know, you get those two wins, you start chirping at Phil Davis, get him back in there, see? <laughs> hey, Phil Davis, you want to run this back at heavyweight, you know? Um, I think it's about time he comes up to heavyweight. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> you thought it all about how, how unique that situation would be if, if you win this fight, get a title shot with Bader, then you, you fight him for titles twice in two different divisions. I don't think that's happened very often. I know, and, and it's... Crazy to think that that's where we are right now, you know? So um, obviously, yeah, unfinished business with both of them. So obviously that's the perfect scenario. Um, what I'm planning to do, beat Modoski, beat Bader, become world champion. Um, but now I just got to go in there and deal with Modoski first. You know, I can't look past him. Um, yeah, and then we'll, we'll go to the next one after that. Right, I know you can't put the cart before the horse, but of you course. got this guy first. But, but just in terms of rematches in general, yeah. you know, how, how much stock do you put in the first time that you've fought a guy uh, and wondering whether or not he's going to have grown the same way that you've grown in the same amount of time? Um, like, like I mentioned, I don't like to lose. So once I've lost against like a person, I, I put every single thing into the into the rematch you know i try and cover all my mistakes that i did and correct them and i felt like when i lost against modoski the first time i i went back and i changed like that, that like the mis mistakes that i made just to make myself a better person and i know at some point i was gonna fight him again so we're here now so it's time to show what i've actually worked on and what i've changed and you know what's going to work in the fight been a little bit less than a year since you last fought, right? So was that layoff appropriate, given that you do get a rematch with him that you've been wanting, or would you have preferred to do this against anybody a little bit sooner? Yeah, I would rather 
sooner because I wasn't injured or nothing. So I was ready and good to go. Um, it's just the way it worked out, pretty much. It just worked out, you know. I didn't get the fight before last year, so it works out now. So nothing's changed. All it's done is just kept me a little bit more healthier and work on a few more things. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm good to go. All right, Layton over here. We'll just take a trip down memory lane. Seven years ago, you did a sit down with Bellator. You referred to your nickname, The Swarm, as a blend of Hoist, Gracie, and Randy Couture. What was it like seeing those two at Fedor's last fight? Oh, it's crazy, man. I was speaking about Royce, Royce the other day. Um, he's one of the guys I really look up to. So seeing him again, one of the pioneers, you know, and he's one of the guys that actually got me into, um, into this sport. So yeah, I, real, good, real good business with that guy. And then also September 2015, you come to the same building, prepared to fight two men in one night. Now, 2023, you're on the verge of a title shot. Speak on the evolution of these last eight years. Yeah, that, that's crazy, because the mindset for that, I went into that tournament looking past King Mo, already looking into the final. Like, that's, that, that was my mindset, and obviously I had to learn you know, the hard way again. I'm um, looking past people. Um, so yeah, going from that, again, obviously, I felt like that was a big kick up the ass. Um, but now, yeah, to be fighting pretty much for number one contender shows the levels in what I've changed and willing to sacrifice, you know, to get to where I am now. Like people say, I haven't come this far to only come this far. And last one for me. There's a fun video of Jason Jackson giving you the patented clothesline from hell. If <laughs> no, you... no, no, that's the other way. <laughs> oh, I yeah, yeah. Him, you gave him the him He did the F5 on me. Mm -hmm. um, that, that was like a couple of years ago, but I clotheslined him. <laughs> yeah, if you were a WWE superstar, would that be your finishing move or would it be something else? Ah, oh, man. You know what? I think that'd be one of them. Maybe not the actual finisher, but I'll be one of them. Maybe the tombstone. Maybe get someone the tombstone, I think. <laughs>